Simon, um, you are, I read this this morning, the only person, it seems, in the world who's read this 145-page <laughs> document, Directive, uh, it is a, it's, it's a minefield, isn't it? It's not quite a directive at the moment, just to be completely clear. It's a set of proposals, but they are very far advanced, and they've been through lots of stages of the European Commission, and they're now going to the European Council, where the heads of state and government will say, yes, let's rubber stamp this proposal. Uh, in simplest layman's terms, if you go to America, you fill in what's called an ESTA. Um, you fill it in online, or you go and get the form, and that is, is like a temporary visa. I'm going to get this wrong, but I think the Europeans ESTA is that right? Etias. I knew you did that. I th that's all right. right. I, th that's I think we're, we're all going to get used to that. <laughs> it's an, that, it's um, not an airline. It <laughs> stands for Electronic Travel Information and Authorization System, and the clue's in the name, really. They want to know much more about you before you even get on a plane to go to Europe, and they want to decide whether or not you're the sort of person they want to let in. At the moment, you've got your British passport. You just turn up in France or Germany or Italy or Spain or wherever, and all the immigration official can do is have a look, make sure it's your document make sure it's valid that's all you can then do whatever you want from whenever we leave the eu and this system comes in mm. then you're going to have to go online say i'm going to mallorca um and here's my name address all my details i don't have any contagious diseases don't have any serious c criminal convictions and i'm going to be going on holiday now i said this morning to kate didn't i, I said but but you could lie we, presumably this is all about security and terrorism and, and you could lie to which she quite rightly said to me but there's 72 hours to check so that booze cruise to calais or whatever at the last minute is not going to happen is it you're going to have to well, be They'll have days to check to, you out. To be fair, um, the, the way it works with the Esther scheme, let, let's remember what happens when Kate puts all her details in, they will compare that against some watch lists. Basically, um, people on Interpol's files, people on European files, you know, general undesirables. And, of course, it's going to say, oh, that's Kate, we'll let her General in. undesirables. And, 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 um, and so that, that, that will come that. through in a few minutes. Mm. If it doesn't, if you don't automatically get something in a few minutes, then you're going to have to have some interesting uh, discussions, possibly, including even going to the Spanish consulate in London to have an interview before they'll uh, let you in. In the run-up to the referendum, when we all voted to, to leave or stay, and we all know we voted to leave, I did a whole little tour of Europe, talking, do you remember? And one of the things people were saying is, oh, all the people in Spain were saying, it's not going to be a problem, it is all just kind of propaganda from the Remain campaign, it's as much in the interest of Spain and Greece and everything that we go there on holiday as it is for us to go there on holiday. There will be no visas, I can categorically tell you that. Is this actually another thing that we find out isn't true? Well, this was going on in parallel with the EU referendum. Right. In fact, many of the decisions on this were taken before the referendum. And had we voted to remain, it would have been an irrelevance because we would be in and it, it wouldn't, wouldn't matter to us. Um, mm. So I think people simply were unaware of what was likely to happen mm. in terms of the uh, requirements that Europe was already bringing in. And certainly, well, all sorts of people said all sorts of things during it, the EU referendum campaign, which perhaps didn't turn out. And I'm talking well, about both sides Interestingly, j j we were talking before about the, the, the proposed divorce Brexit bill, £36 billion. You've got a five-euro note there, and this yep. is, for me, the, the really interesting thing. We voted as a democracy, let's just make that yep. point and underline it, as you said, to leave. In essence, you are going to have to pay a five-euro fee to go and travel across Europe when they bring this in. Are people thus going to say, hold on a minute, we voted to leave Europe and now it's costing us five years, we're still putting money in the coffers of the European Union? Well, they're going to make... Uh, this scheme is going to take cost €100 million to set up. They're going to make more than that in the first year just from British visitors if we keep up the same travel patterns. But uh, there we so are. So is it their uh, interest to make it easy for us, I guess, is it? Well, um, they're, they're trying to make it again, easy it? at the same time as keeping the external borders of the EU secure. At the mm. moment, we're inside. So the it's EU. that whole thing we were talking about before. Yeah. We want our own thing, but we want to do trade. We want to have our own border, but we want to be able to visit there. We want to pay something, but not too much. It's all negotiation. It is. Interesting.